<laughs> hey, welcome to, with, to the Wicker Bar. You know me, I'm the host of this video, Lord Zippy Blaine, the Duke of the goddamn motherfucking Delridge. I'm cooking dinner tonight. I'm making up a couple of couple of cocktails. Um, for dinner this evening, I'm doing um some short ribs that are braised in um, some chimay. This is a, a Belgian ale, and um, in this day and age, with everybody uh, wagging their wieners around for the taste of a fine IPA, um, the old import beers are a little bit harder to come by than they used to be. Um, so this took me a while to find it. I would have, I wished I could have found it in the. Uh, they used to do it in like a four pack, a smaller, a smaller bottle. Um, I do believe, or maybe I'm thinking the, the Duvel. Anyway, so eighteen dollar, eighteen dollar bottle of uh, beer right here, and I opted for this one versus the uh, Grand Reserve, uh, which comes in the um, with the blue label. That one was like nineteen dollars. Um, so we're doing some, uh, yep, uh, Chimay braised short ribs. We're gonna get into that later on. Um, and we're out of the. Uh, this is one of our favorite cookbooks right here. Um, we don't bust this one out too too often because it's kind of fancy. And today is Saturday, so we're making it fancy. Um, this is a Zuni cookbook. Um, by Judy Rogers, uh, Zuni Cafe was uh, a spot down in, was it San Francisco or Albuquerque, New Mexico, or where was that? I don't even remember. But way, way back in the day, one of Rayel and I's, one of our things was, we were always getting um, autographed cookbooks, and this one is for Blaine and Rayel. Rayel, always cook with art, and that's what we're doing this evening, we're cooking with art. Um, so and this is a, a James, James Beard award-winning restaurant, and it just seems fitting that we're doing um, cocktails out of the official mixer's manual for home and professional use by Cap Patrick Gavin Duffy, revised and enlarged by James A. Beard. It only seemed appropriate. So um, if you ever see this one at the thrift store, um, this, this is a pretty good one. It has all the drinks um, divided up by, uh, by liquor. Um, it can be a little confusing, but anyway, it's a good one. So we picked a couple of three cocktails out of that book, and the one that we're going to do first um, is called the Golden Clipper and the only difference is we didn't have any um, peach liqueur. We had some pear liqueur. So we're going pear instead of peach. Um, but still, we got some rum. We have some London dry gin in there. And I'm going to juice up a little teeny bit of this orange right here. Because we need a couple of ounces of orange juice. And down here, we don't have the, uh, you don't have a proper, uh, proper juicer. You know the, that, that type of deal there. And this is probably the last weekend down here, remote remote location. And uh, we were out, we went to have, went, went for a little walk this morning down in the uh, sleepy, sleepy town of Shelton, Washington. And, um, after, and then we went to have breakfast. And then we decided to go for a little drive. We got caught in a squall. We got caught in a squall while we were on our walk. So we decided to go for a little drive. And uh, we're on this road where the um, speed limit is clearly marked at 35 miles an hour. And um, we look up ahead, and there is a car that had just crashed. And it had just happened probably, couldn't have been more than 10 or 10 or 15 seconds um, before we got there. But it was an older gentleman. Um, he was um, wearing his uh, Vietnam um, veteran um, um, colors. And he was driving a, a Porsche, and I can't, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a Porsche Panamera or Panamera. It's, it's a four-door, four-door. Um, so he was an older gentleman, and it's in, his, in his late 70s, he had, uh, he had claimed to hit a wet spot. Um, there was no wet spot in the road. Um, so we, we stopped, stopped, helped him out, helped him get out of his car. Um, he was unable to because all the uh, airbags had, had deployed. He, he was having a little bit, a little bit of trouble um, getting out of his car. He was, a, he wasn't injured. He had hurt his shoulder. He was a little disoriented, and I had to keep him from continuing to walk out of the road because cars were speeding by. And the interesting thing, among many of the interesting things um, that happened with that, is the only people that stopped to help this guy. And I'm not a young person, so. I'm not even going to count myself in that today. It was only young people that stopped. Everybody else just drove right on by. It was fucking crazy. It's just, I mean, what has happened to this world when somebody will not even take a few moments to help their uh, uh, fellow human being that's in a, uh, in a little bit of a distressed state? So, Rail got on the phone, called up, called 911. Um, another car stopped. They called 911 as well. And, um, yeah, a car showed up, and I think everything was okay. 
he was a little, um, he was saying it was a $150,000 car. I don't, I don't believe so because it was a four door for one thing. So, um, yeah, whatever. So anyway, um, here we go. Uh, the Golden Clipper, number two, because we're using pear. And this one's really, really easy because it's going to get two ounces of everything. And we're going to make this. I'm just going to dump all that in there. We're going to make this cocktail. Oh, that's two and a half. I'll just do two and a half of everything. How about that? I'm going to get this shaken up. Then I'm going to pull out the stuff. We're going to braise these short ribs and the recipe in the Zuni cookbook. Um, she is only braising them aside of with the with the shimay, uh, half half shimay, half meat stock. Um, she's just throwing in some whole peppercorns, a few bay leaves and onions, and some dried uh, mushrooms that we have. And we happen to have some dried porcini, so we'll reconstitute those, reconstitute those in a little, little bit of water as well. But we're gonna throw in um, we're gonna throw in a few a few radishes and some uh, carrots and maybe this last last potato that, that's here. Um, we were thrown for another loop. This has happened to us a couple of times this season where we come down here to a remote location to find out that the uh, breaker has tripped on the refrigerator. So we've lost, I don't know, between this time and the last time, I don't know, probably around $600 worth of food. And it fucking stinks. You, you can imagine what, what a bunch of chicken pieces festering away in a in a refrigerator for uh, about a month. That's nasty. Nasty, nasty. There we go. The Golden Clipper number two. You should really buy this. I should, shouldn't I? <clears throat> and then after we do the Golden Clipper, we are going to um, do one of these other two. We have the Tulip. Which it seems like to me like we've done the tulip before. And then the other one is the star number two. And the uh, the book didn't have a star number one, so I don't really know what that's all about. But the one thing that was that we were able to salvage out of the fridge was all of these citrus fruits that we remember to put in the refrigerator. We did uh, kind of wash them all off because the freezers looked really nasty. I would not use ice out of that ice maker um, ever, ever again. Nasty. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's more, a little bit more. No, I got a little, little pear, a little, little back, back of a pear. Orange, orange is up there a little bit uh, more forward. Okay, so just, just hang tight. I've got the, uh, I've got the short ribs. They're just about ready. Um, she suggests taking, taking the short ribs and salting them. Um, one or, one or two days in advance, and that is what I have done, and I'm going to get those out, and I'm going to brown them off, and uh, I'm hoping this pan is going to be big enough. Might be a little tight in there, but... We have the blue one. Yeah, well, let's use this one that's sexier. Okay, so hang tight, enjoy this cocktail, and I'm going to get back, and I'm going to finish making this here for, for me and Rayo. You guys aren't here. Here are our short ribs, and unfortunately, I didn't have time to go to the, uh, go to the butcher, so I had to get these um, at the grocery store, and um, when I get them at the grocery store, they usually pack three, three or four to a pack, and sometimes there's only two of them. When you do the, when you do something like this, it's really nice if they're all about the same size. Um, here we go. I think our pan is nice and hot. And here, just to show you the uh, the porcini's, I think I've mentioned in in previous videos of how I've uh, how I've purchased a less expensive uh, dried mushroom and it was all gritty and it just was didn't work at all. I think we're about ready. Um, our onion, we don't have any bay leaf, but we have our onion, just a few mushrooms, and um, just a couple of radishes, and a couple of carrots I'm gonna throw in there. And I wanna, you kinda wanna, kinda wanna dry the meat off when you're doing like a browning or something like this, cause it just helps it get a little bit more color to it. So I'm gonna cook these, obviously, meat side down. It's gonna be about three minutes, three minutes aside. You don't wanna crowd it, don't wanna crowd the pan. Don't crowd the pan. There we go. Then when they're done and brown, I'm gonna put them on this pan. Then I'm gonna do uh, 
I'll see how much uh, fat is in there. If I need to drain some of that out, I will. And then I'm going to add the short ribs back in uh, with our vegetables. I'm going to give these uh, give those dried dried mushrooms a little little chop. And these other mushrooms here, I'm definitely going to uh, I'm going to half those. And um, I might we have a couple of shallots over here. I might go ahead and throw those in there as well, um, just because we have them. So if you all just hang and just hang hang tight, and I'm going to be right back. Ooh, here we go. So look at those short ribs. I got some nice, nice color on them, and I did, uh, I did drain the, uh, the the grease out of there. And I've got my veggies all, all prepped up and ready to go. So I'm gonna put these in the pan, and I have the oven preheated to uh, 300 degrees. And you can you can braise these on, on the stove top too if you'd like. I don't know. I like to do the braising in, in the oven. And these are gonna take take two two and a half hours. So I'm gonna put these in the pan, bone side down. And then I'm going to um, I'm going to give this pan enough time to. Uh, I want the liquid to be hot when I put it in the oven. I don't want to put the liquid to be cold when I put it in there. All right, there they are. They're arranged in there nicely, not too too crowded. Now let's get our vegetables in there. Just start a half an onion. And she suggests cutting it up into bigger pieces because the idea with the onion, she didn't want it to be where it kind of just kind of disintegrated in the uh, in the braise. Just one little potato there. Uh, I'm going to cut these up. I'm going to cut these radishes up. A little shallot just cut because we had it. Might as well use it. A couple of carrots. Couple of mushrooms there. I don't think I'm gonna put all those in there. Let me cut these radishes in half. And, and having had, had the opportunity to um, uh, be in Belgium, um, what are those? Those are the dried mushrooms, the dried porcini. <clears throat> Having had the opportunity to be into Belgium, be be in Belgium, drinking Belgian beer, I, I, I'm sorry guys, but over here in the United States, it, um, I just have I've not found one that says they say that they're done in the um, in the spirit of the Belgian ales, and I just don't. They always just seem to fall fall a little flat. Um, it's kind of like when uh, the Weizen became popular here in Seattle in the uh, late '80s, and. Uh, we had already uh, had it in, in Germany, and it's, it's like, ah, it's just not, just not the same. All right. So let's get our Chimay in there. Ooh, bubbly. I don't want the, uh, the vegetables and the beef to be totally covered. I want it to be about three quarters of the way up. Mm, delicious. All right, I'm going to crank this heat up. So like I said, about two, two and a half hours in the oven, 300 degrees. And with this, um, we're either going to do some uh, soft polenta or uh, but buttered noodles. We have some asparagus. We have some uh, spinach that we might cook up as well. So everybody just hang tight. Um, when this gets up to a boil, stick it in the oven. And then um, I'll make the next cocktail for you. And I think I'm going to do the... Um, I'm going to do the star number two because we do have a uh, we do have a grapefruit here that we'd like to kind of try to ease up some of these citrus fruits that we have down here. So everybody just, just hang tight and we're going to be back. All right, well, here we go. I didn't want you to think I was going to uh, exclude you from part of our journey of this wonderful uh, Saturday afternoon. Of course, it's raining all day long and then just like the past three days, the sun comes out um, in the afternoon. So I don't know, maybe we'll go walk around in the, in the wet grass or... Go, go do something. So, so here we are. Um, we are now we're doing the star of number two. Once again, out of the uh, Patrick Gavin Duffy, the official mixer's guide for home and professional use, including special new sections on wines, their selection, care, and service, plus Frank Schoenmacher's new vintage chart. 
whole bunch of wines that are no longer available and probably some of them if you happen to have them in your wine cellar they might be worth a lot a lot of money um so here we go um we don't have any actual you know proper calvados but we do have a bottle of a uh, laird's uh, applejack here we're going to throw that in there we're back with our uh, london dry gin and it's going to have a, just a little a whisper of a uh, dry vermouth a little whisper of sweet vermouth and some grapefruit so once again bear with me bear, this is going to be a strong one because really the uh, not a whole lot of juice in here but we do have this delicious grapefruit about three tablespoons of grapefruit, or I don't know, that's about a half an ounce or so. There we go. Short ribs are in the oven. Timer is on, I'm gonna keep checking them to make sure that the uh, liquid is staying where it needs to stay. All right, here we go. We're gonna go on three ounces of our gin. of our Laird's Applejack. Just a whisper. Where's my little whisper? Here we go. A teaspoon and a half. Oop. Sweet. And about a little bit of, oh, there we go, of our dry vermouth as well. And then Stay awake from this dinner. <laughs> no, I don't. There we go. But I guess if we're doing the uh, soft polenta, I got some time. That, that will be the next thing that I, that I get going on. This is gonna be a sipper. Boom, Rayel, join me. Alright. Oh, I smell the, the gin is cutting right through there. strong I'm sorry I'm sorry for cursing that was really really strong it's gonna need some more juice you think so Woo. God, darn all right um hang tight you know real time you're watching TV time I'm not I, we're not we, we don't have like six ovens here where we can you know have one batch of the short ribs you know it's Saturday night so we like the sports on Saturday night but they're not we're not giving that shit away, so we <laughs> don't have like extra. We don't have anybody else here to feed. To feed, um, so it's just us. So hang tight, real time. Just think, two and a half hours. So if I'm a little bit later, I'm ready to. Come on, Jeffrey, feed me. Okay, we'll be back. All right, here we go. I mean, can you believe it's been almost two hours? We finished the cocktails. We've moved on to a. Uh, Delightful little uh, Chardonnay here. I'm not sure. I think this this either came from the uh, the Vanderpools or the Horlitzes. I can't remember. It's delicious. Got our asparagus going. I have our soft polenta. We didn't actually have polenta because it's all in the different the way that it, the different grind of the uh, of the cornmeal. So we just had actually corn cornmeal that we use and. Uh, there was an Anthony Bourdain trick that he did where he would soak, if you're doing polenta, he would soak the, the polenta in your liquid for a couple hours and it would speed up the cooking. Did something like that. This is a, a, kind of a bit smoother. 
asparagus is going, I'm about ready to pull out these short ribs. I'm gonna put them up here. I'm gonna pull those short ribs out. I'm gonna put them on this pan. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, reduce the uh, sauce. So hang tight, we don't have like a gimbal or anything. Multiple cameras for real, follow me. But I'm over here, I'm really in the oven. Fabulous. Let's crank this up. So in the uh, the Zuni cookbook re um, recipe, there wasn't a lot of vegetables in there. So these vegetables that I put in, obviously they released a lot of uh, liquid that uh, we wouldn't already have. So here we go. Those look good. They're pretty fucking good. I mean, pretty good to me. Alright. There we go. That is... Weird, the lighting here is because it's so bright outside, but here in the house is very, very dark. So it's like everything over here is very, very dark. I'm gonna let these cool down a little bit, and I'm going to smother some Dijon mustard. I'm gonna brush it on there. I'm gonna put those under the broiler. Once this uh, reduces a little bit, polenta is done. Asparagus. I'm thinking the asparagus is good. I'm gonna turn that off the heat. So. We'll be back. Yeah. We're, gonna be, we're gonna be back in a little bit. I'm gonna play this dinner up. Thank you very much. It is Saturday. I'm going to you blame the dude with the goddamn motherfucking hood canal, and I'm making short ribs braised in. Oh, Shemay's in the refrigerator. Shemay, uh, Shemay. We'll be back. Get out of here. No, don't, don't leave. Come back. Okay, here we go. We're about ready to finish this up. It's been, I don't know, two, two and a half, three hours. I'm still here. I'm doing all right. The, the sun, obviously the sun, like I said earlier on, now the sun's in full effect. But luckily enough, it's going to be light out for another hour, so we might go skinny dipping or go pearl diving, if you know what I mean, brothers. Um, okay, so I did have to add a little bit of a thickener um, to my... Uh, sauce here to my uh, braising liquid. That's bubbling away nicely. Short ribs are under the broiler. I put a little smear of Dijon mustard on there. Our polenta is ready to go. Asparagus that was ready. Hopefully it's not, it's not too, too dead. So here I go, ready to make this happen. We've done gray short ribs a number of times before, but this is the first, this would be the first time that we've done the gray short ribs work. Well, actually, you know, like all the bones fell off during the, uh, during the uh, braising process. All right, so here we go. Let's see how this is gonna go. And you know, these plates here, they're not really very attractive. There are some of our uh, soft, soft polenta. They're beautiful. Or there for you. Some grilled. It's just simple. I didn't do anything. I almost thought about putting a little uh, lemon zest on this asparagus, but I didn't. I'm sorry. I should have. So what do we got here? There's a potato. The carrots. Mushroom. Where's the word of those? Oh, there we go. The radish has totally turned color. There we go. You've had dinner here with me and Rael. 
I'm Lord Zippy Blaine, the Duke of the goddamn motherfucking Delridge. Look at that, motherfuckers. I mean, Shimei braids, short ribs, took, I don't know, about fucking three hours, plus all the uh, advance work. But you know what? It's worth it. It's Saturday night. We're making it happen. Peace and love. Hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful uh, Saturday. And tomorrow is the 1st of May, and that rings in 14 years of Zippy's Giant Burgers. This year, we're not making a big deal about it, but that's, you have 14 years. How many of you people out there have done something for 14 years? It's remarkable. Okay, peace out. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share this with friends. Happy hour from the Wicker Boy, Lords of Be Big.